In this module, we shall look at risk management in the context of Murabha as a mode of finance. Murabha as a mode of financing and not just as a contract. Risks in Murabha financing could be several and there could be some risks which are before the sale of the asset and there could be some risks which happen after the sale of the asset and there could be some risks which may arise before the purchase of the asset as well. However, we will not go into all these details. Now, I might sound a bit unreasonable by going into this conversation on risks in Murabha financing before reminding you what is the structure of Murabha financing. I assume that by now you have fairly good understanding of Murabha as a contract and Murabha as an Islamic mode of finance. I might be wrong in my expectation. Hence, I would like to refresh your memory by giving you the simple definition of Murabha. We studied that Murabha is a cost plus sale, in which case the seller discloses its profit to the buyer. Mostly the price in the contemporary context is paid after a delay. So, there is a credit facility attached to a Murabha contract. Murabha as a mode of financing is bigger than that one. When this is used as a mode of financing, then there are quite a few other arrangements like purchase undertaking, there could be the use of collateral attached to Murabha as a mode of financing. So, I hope that my conversation after this would make sense to you. So, there are some risks which are uh, pre sale. You know, when the bank buys the asset and then sells it to the customer, we are talking about that point. There could be a withdrawal risk, i.e., the customer may change his or her mind. Customer fills the application form and the bank accepted it, and then the bank made arrangements for buying the asset. But when the bank calls the customer, the customer says, Sorry, I have changed my mind, or sorry, my circumstances have changed. So, that is what we call as withdrawal of application risk. There could be some supply related risk. Customer to tayar hai, lekin pata chale ke supplier saab ne late kar liya. So, that could be one risk as well. Then there are some ownership related risk. There is a short period of time when the asset to be sold to the customer could still be in the custody and ownership of the bank and something happened. Because of that, you know, there would be certain risks in that situation. And then there are certain post-sale risks which include quite a number of risks and we would look into them. Let us analyze a typical Murabha financing deal in the context of risk management. This is the point I am referring to, sale at t naught. This is the point when the bank actually sells the asset to the customer. And of course, this is the point when खरीद चुका होगा किसी इस पॉइंट पे हम टी माइनस इसे कह देते 
So, before the asset is sold to the customer as part of a Murabha mode of financing, there is as I said a possibility of withdrawal risk, supply related risk, ownership related risk. So, this is happening before the core activity of selling the asset to the customer. We call them pre-sale risks. Then the bank has actually sold the asset to the customer. There could be credit risk. This is relevant. Then okay, the customer will have to start paying monthly installments, delay in them, default. Customer So that credit risk is very relevant. Markup risk. Now, let me explain this markup risk. In this context, in case of Murabha mode of finance, the price is fixed. Once the price is fixed, whatever happens in the market, that cannot affect the price of this Murabha item. And this cannot affect the rate of return on that asset. However, in case of banks, banks would always go to the money market and they would get some more money if they are in, in need of money and they would be paying whatever return is relevant on that particular day. Those rates actually they determine the cost of capital for the bank. Islamic banks they do not charge interest, they do not pay interest. However, the movements in interest rate would have an effect on the markup rate as well. So, if markup cannot be changed, although the interest rate benchmark is changing, that would give rise to a risk which is called markup risk. Commodity asset price risk, this is slightly relevant. It's relevant indirectly. Of course, the bank has sold the asset to the customer. Then the ownership right is actually with the customer. If its price goes up or goes down, principally customer is responsible for that. However, the bank has a stake in it because of this credit risk, because of this possibility of de default. This asset may actually come back to the bank and if at that time the asset has come back to the bank in a very bad uh, kind of shape and its price is very low, the bank may not be able to cover its price. So from that viewpoint this commodity asset price is relevant. Now, what are the measures, risk management measures taken by Islamic banks to mitigate Murabha mode of financing risk? Very quickly, you know, the supply side or supply related risk, they can be mitigated by an Islamic bank by entering into agreements which would give cancellation rights to the bank. If the customer has run away, the bank's customer. So that is one risk management measure. Now, between the procurement of asset and sale of asset, we said withdrawal risk, ownership related risk, operational risk. Operational risk is there all the time. For operational risk, the use of technology, training, and audit, this is a good measure. For withdrawal risk, we even previously mentioned purchase undertaking or Hamish Jiddiya, i.e. a deposit. For credit risk, default penalty, collateral, other provisions, they are used as risk mitigating tools or risk management tools. The nature of risk in Murabha, I would like to exemplify by way of uh, credit risk. Islamic banks face credit risk because the customer may delay or default completely. Now, this 
credit risk faced by Islamic banks is different from conventional banks. In case of conventional banks, वो तो पेनल्टी ठोक देंगे और कहेंगे जी इतने पैसे और दो एंड दैट पेनल्टी इन केस ऑफ कन्वेंशनल बैंक वुड गो इन टू द इनकम स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द बैंक इन केस ऑफ इस्लामिक बैंक दे कैन नॉट पुट द डिफॉल्ट पेनल्टी मनी ऑन देयर इनकम स्टेटमेंट बट रादर दिस शुड गो टू ए चैरिटी तो ऑल दो कन्वेंशनल बैंक फेस क्रेडिट रिस्क and islamic banks face credit risk but the nature and severity of credit risk in case of islamic banking in the context of uh, murabha as an islamic mode of financing is quite high hence okay we should keep in mind and sometimes we say okay islamic bank is facing credit risk conventional bank is facing credit risk what's the difference the difference is in details so if there is a full default an islamic bank may mitigate that risk by way of uh, uh, having the financed asset as a collateral or having a lien on it or it may ask for a better quality asset as a collateral or third party guarantee is quite possible as well now operational risk in murabha and its management now in ke i would quickly uh, give example of operational risk in case of murabha as a mode of financing now if the bank has received this application from the bank uh, from the customer and the customer says i need a red honda civic model so and so year so and so अब बैंक के एम्प्लॉई ने रेड की बजाय वो वहां वाइट लिख दी एट द टाइम ऑफ डिलीवरी सफेद गाड़ी आ जाती है दैट वुड क्रिएट अ प्रॉब्लम दैट काइंड ऑफ मिस्टेक्स एंड ओवरसाइट दे कैन हैपन इन एनी सिचुएशन बट वेयर सम काइंड ऑफ ट्रेड इज हैपनिंग हैपनिंग द इंसिडेंस ऑफ ऑपरेशनल रिस्क इज क्वाइट हाई अब इसको कैसे मिटिगेट किया जा सकता है बाय वे ऑफ मॉनिटरिंग बाय वे ऑफ ट्रेनिंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स बाय यूज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एज वेल 